Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. As you can tell from the title, I'm going to be talking about the eight Natasha Denona palettes that are going to be leaving my collection. I will no longer have them, but here's why. First of all, this is actually the first video that I'm saying this. I will have another video where I say the same thing as I'm saying now my skincare declutter. I filmed that yesterday, but I decided that this is going to go up first. I'm moving officially. Like we have an apartment and our application's been approved. So at the end of February, Jose and I are moving to Miami. Super duper excited about what that means. I'm losing some Natasha Denona palettes. So I started my YouTube channel when I was in college and I moved back home with my parents and my mom also, as you guys know, has a very big makeup obsession like myself and we love the same brands. We love Natasha Denona. So especially in the beginning of my YouTube channel when I was trying to grow, but I I didn't have that much money. My mom and I would go half on things. We lived in the same house, so we could get a Natasha Denona palette if we just split the money. It worked a lot easier that way. But since that time, which by the way, just hit my four year anniversary on YouTube four years ago to now, many things have changed in my life. I was gonna move out eventually, so there are some things amid this divorce that my mom is keeping and that I am not. So I figured I'd have kind of a last hurrah with these palettes in a video and talk about them. I will say though, I've been anticipating this separation of makeup collections for over a year now. My husband and I have been anticipating this move. So I've slowly, if a palette has gone on sale for a good discount, have been adding the palettes that I know my mom ha will keep for herself to my collection. So it's not as devastating as a year ago when I thought it was going going to be. So we're going to start off, like I said, there's eight palettes with my five pan palettes or not my five pan palettes anymore. So I have one mini that is going to be exiting my collection. This is the mini nude and this is one that honestly I might have to pick up during the next Sephora VIB sale because this is one of Natasha's better five panners that are $25. This is one that I highly recommend to you guys. The reason why I haven't picked this up at this point for myself is because you know I don't need these colors. I probably have these colors already in my Natasha Denona collection, but for the price point, the colors are just really great. This is her fantastic quality. I'm gonna zoom you in and let's just swatch, shall we? I'm gonna turn the lights down so you can really see the colors a little bit better. Look at that, do you see the reflect? By the way, ugh, my fingers are super dry. I swear I've been lotioning them, but they get like this every winter. Anyways, ugh, they feel so buttery smooth. Let's swatch them. Look at that, oh my goodness. Is this a swatch and sip? I don't know. <gasps> see that? Well, no, you can't. It's blurry. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hold your horses. Look at this. Ugh, that shade right there. And then we have, this one's not exciting, <laughs> matte brown. I mean, these are like a little bit on the warmer side, neutrals, and you can see the shimmers are really reflective. They really are the traditional, really great Natasha Denona formula. You're not getting skipped out on with her providing like a cheaper quality formula. So this is one that I'm really, really sad to leave behind. Um, and I am anticipating purchasing this in the near future just to have it, you know, for reference on my channel. So that's the first one that I will be saying goodbye to. And by the way, a number of these are older palettes because in the recent year, I've been buying the stuff outright by myself everything that's launched because I knew I was moving, but not at the time that most of these palettes were out. Okay, the next one is a super duper old one. This is when my mom and I first discovered Natasha Denona. This is the eyeshadow palette, palette number 10. Now, how pretty is this? I actually do have these shades though in my collection. These are in one of the 28 pan eyeshadow palettes, which I do have from Natasha Denona. So she doesn't really sell these too often or at least she doesn't market them but she used to make these five pans which a lot of them were shades that were already existing like in the 28 pan palettes and this was before i purchased a 28 pan palette because this color curation is everything so this palette has certainly seen better days probably but 
Ugh, you know, you just don't see the curations like this when you are looking at the palette itself where there's 28 shades. I didn't envision a color story like this, but when Natasha, her being the genius that she is, puts them together for you, I love that. So if you look at the 28 Pam palettes, I suggest you look up some of her 5 Pam palettes because you can truly get some inspiration just by looking at these. And then we have this shade right here matte purple. So this is one of her most gorgeous five pans that she curated in my opinion, but obviously I'm not sad about it <laughs> because I do have these colors. Uh, but this color story, you have to admit, it's absolutely stunning. But also if you don't want to pay for the 128 pan palette, it might be worth looking into seeing if these are on her website still because they are her great 28 pan formula which hot take uh those are her best formulations she's ever created so how pretty is this i love this like taupey purpley shade right here by the way my skin is looking not good i'm testing out a new foundation <laughs> my ugh, does not look good there anyways so that is the next palette that i will be saying hasta la vista too okay this next one i know so many of you guys are going to be sad for me this is one of Natasha's more popular ones. Is this limited edition? I don't think it is. But it is just a classic neutral palette, you guys. Unfortunately, my mom is not willing to give this one up because she loves it so much. It's one of her favorites. This is the Camel palette. I mean, neutral lovers. You know. You see. <laughs> this is so stunning. I'm sad about this one, but I don't think I will ever pick this up just because you know I don't need these colors, okay? I probably have them a thousand times over in my collection, but it's just the fact of how it's curated into one palette. There aren't any glitters in it, by the way. I know you can see the reflex in that top color. It's just what's left over on my fingers from the makeup I was playing with today. This curation is so great. It's great to travel with. These are everyday wearable colors. That great Natasha Denona formula. It's fabulous. It really, really is. This is one that I'm super sad to be saying goodbye to, but you know, it's not one that I've been reaching for at all lately, but it's just great to know that you have it and to have this option. But it is time for me to say goodbye. I totally recommend it though. The reason that it's not coming with me is because my mom loves it so much. So it's a great, great palette. This eyeshadow palette was in my early days of YouTube that I reviewed it. It is so pretty to look at. This is the Cranberry palette. Take a look at this. Natasha does not come out with five pans like this really anymore, does she? So this is her first attempt at the wet dry formula that she came up with. No, what is this called? At the cream to powder formulation that she came out with. And boy, it was a major fail. Whenever you hear me talking about her cream to powder formulation being improved, this is where it started from and it was not a good place. I was not super in love with this palette, honestly, you guys. Let me show you some swatches. So we have Daisy. So we have this shade right here, which is absolutely stunning, right? This totally makes the palette. I think this shade right here didn't really give me too much on the eyelid. And then, of course, this shade was just fine, right? Natasha really doesn't mess around with shimmers. She doesn't do bad. But look at this. Okay, it looks okay by swatch. Actually, it looks like this, but let me show you. So, obviously, the shade, oh, yes, this has made the palette worth keeping right here. This shade is what it's all about. So, that second shade, you can see it's a little bit sheer, almost like watercolor on the eyelid. And then we have this shade, and then it's just not giving what it should give. You know what I mean? Take a look at this in the pan. Do you see how dark it is and what you get? That was very disappointing when this palette came out. I got a pretty look with it. I liked a lot of the shades in here, but this was a palette that I just didn't recommend because it wasn't up to par. You know, and then we have this shade right here. She kills it with shimmers, absolutely, but the matte shades and most looks are what's going to be the base, the foundation. And if you don't have that good foundation, it's not really worth it when you're paying this much money. Anyways, the palette is so pretty by swatch, absolutely. Uh, and I do love the shimmers in here, but I do not feel my heart breaking about 
not bringing this one with me. I haven't had too many instances where I've had to refer back to this either, so I don't even feel as though it's of too much value in my collection, but what a little fun walk down memory lane. Ooh, I wish she would come out with more formulations like this. Wow, it's like a chroma crystal. Absolutely stunning. Okay, last five pan before we get into the big dogs. But this is also a little bit older. This is the Coral palette. This one is cute. She's a nice spring palette, but I'd call her forgettable, okay? Because I don't really remember too much about this palette. I haven't been inclined to reach for it. There hasn't been instances where I've needed to refer back to it. So she's certainly forgettable because I pretty much forgot about her. Uh, so let's take a look here. Very pretty spring colors. Of course, you know I'm reaching towards this. From what I can remember, I would say I wasn't enthused with this palette. I mean, I thought it was fine, but nothing to write home about, really, just with all the other options that Natasha Denona gives you. Hmm, yeah, okay, this shade was a little underwhelming. I mean, if you saw how this shade swatched in the Cranberry palette, I think this is why I was a little disappointed because it looks really poppy and beautiful on the palette, but it is a bit more sheer, more lit toppery. Just take a step back, you can see it's okay on the eyelid, but nothing to write home about. And then the warm tones, which are very, very warm. Ooh, that matte looks pretty, and that's quite rich. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think I had too many terrible things to say about this little quint here. I think it's really cute for the spring. I'm not mad about it at all. But it's not a palette that I am going to be missing too much from my collection as well. Did you pick this up? Do you remember this palette? I really don't remember too much about it. As I wash my hands here, let's prepare for the big ones. Uh, there's only three, which thank goodness, because I have been preparing for that. <laughs> uh, like, I, if I had moved a year ago, I would not have had the Biba palette. I would not have had the gold palette and I would not have had the Lila palette. All of those were ones that I was like, oh, okay, like I need to, I need to get those in my collection before I move. Uh, well, let's start off with the one that I'm the least sad about. This is the Sunset palette, kind of the OG Natasha Denona palette. Her 28 pants came out before this, but this really made her get a lot of attention. I mean, so many brands were trying to dupe this color story right here. It is extremely, extremely warm. You guys know I'm not so into really warm toned palettes these days. I like a warm toned look, don't get me wrong, but palettes that have so much red and orange are a bit too intense for my preferences. So this has been a palette the last couple of years that I've just really not been interested at all. I haven't been sad about losing it, but this past month for my beauty buff tutorial, which if you don't know, I do have a membership on YouTube where I do one exclusive tutorial for you a month. I did use this palette and I really, really enjoyed it. I actually did. It was so pretty and it made me be like, oh my gosh, do I need it? But you guys know I don't need this and I'm going to be saying goodbye to it. This particular one is quite old. Honestly, it might be expired, but take a closer look here. I mean, it's outdated, I feel like at this point for some reason, but it's time to say goodbye. But one thing you will know about these luxury shadows is despite this being at least four years old, <laughs> um, it has kept its true formula over time. With a drugstore or more affordable shadow a lot of times, I feel like they'll, they would have dried out at this point. Not with these high-end formulas like Natasha Denona. The formula has certainly kept its integrity. And a hot topic in makeup that I don't want to get too much into, uh, but just my personal opinion, uh, powders do last longer. You know, you don't get them wet or anything. If you take care of your brushes and you take care of your eyeshadows, you store them in a dry place. Like I said, you wash your brushes before you use them so that bacteria doesn't get into the product either. I keep my powders for quite a long time. You know, not like 10 years or anything crazy like that, but longer than the palette itself would suggest because I take care of it. So this is still good as long as it keeps the integrity of the formula. You're in the clear if you've taken care of it. And look at this. These all swatch so beautifully. This is such a classic Natasha Denona palette before she got into really messing around with her formulas, which is not a bad thing that she did, but 
these were just amazing formulations. So unfortunately, I will be saying goodbye to this one. It's just too warm for me now. I haven't felt the need to pick this up. I know she's had multiple instances where they have been on sale. And every time I've thought about it, and then I just decided, no, you don't need this. So stop it. <laughs> So I actually do have a brand new palette that Natasha Denona just launched that I am choosing to leave behind. And that is the Glam Face Palette in the darker version. So I do have the lighter version that I will be keeping for myself, but this is my mom's. It's the darker palette. To be quite honest, I actually prefer the eyeshadows in here compared to the light. Well, I wouldn't say prefer, but I like both. And I really did want to purchase this palette to take with me because I love this. But... I decided to take a step back because this blush dried out on me, at least in my light palette. Let's see how my mom's looks. But here's what the palette looks like. So there's a cream blush, a highlight powder, and then the most beautiful eyeshadows. I mean, I do really love this palette. I love the layout. I love everything. But I found that in mine, this blush dried out in the light palette. But it actually does not feel like it dried out in my mom's. So very interesting. Um... Anyways, there's not too many colors in this palette, which is one of the main factors you'd buy this palette, dried out in my light, really turned me off to purchasing this second one. Maybe it's just that light formula, or, or maybe there was something wrong with mine, but this did not dry out. So now I want to buy it, but I'm not going to. I don't need it at the end of the day, but I really do love this palette. But anyways, that's something I noticed, and I just noticed that this one did not dry out. Now the shadows in both of these palettes, absolutely incredible. You can see all the dimensions, the variety give you, the formulas are absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Ugh. Even the light one is super duper gorgeous, but of course you're getting so much more depth with this one. Other than the blush drying out, I really don't have anything bad to say about these. You probably don't need them because they're very neutral, dupable colors that you can get from many brands at many price points. But it's a great Natasha Denona formulation. Overall, I was very happy with this palette. And I'm very happy to see that this blush didn't dry out. So now I'm like, mm, do I need it? But you guys know I don't. <laughs> I don't. I was happily able to utilize this when it was new in multiple videos and then also use this deeper palette for reference but I will be saying goodbye to it in the next coming weeks okay it is time for the last palette and this is the one that I'm having a very hard time with I, I was never attracted to this palette at first but I think over time makeup changes with my preferences as I've gotten a little bit more older I'm regretting it the star palette. I'm saying goodbye to the star palette. So this is actually the eyeshadow palette that I'm wearing today. And how pretty is this look? So one of the biggest reasons why I didn't like this palette, and it's so stupid, but visually, I did not like this space here in the middle. Now I understand you have this more neutral section, and then you have this more rosy kind of section over here. They're split. I just visually, I did not like that. I just wanted to push them together. So I was never drawn to this palette. Then my mom picked it up for herself. This was something she bought for herself. I didn't go have these with her because I never really wanted this. But now I love cool tones and I love these styles of neutrals. I'm, I love this palette. I mean, the color stories are stunning. The formulations is stunning. I just... It's expensive, so I haven't bought it yet. And to be quite honest, I don't talk about it too much in other videos, so there isn't an immediate need to have it. I don't need anything. But let's swatch, okay? So I'm gonna start off with the more neutral section that you saw. Um, oh my gosh, like, look at this. I mean, it's on my eyes right now. It's so pretty. This is in a weird order. Look at that. I mean, you cannot beat... Sorry. <sighs> You just can't beat this formula, can you? I mean... We even got this duochrome in here. Lastly, this is the color that's all over my eye. It looks gorgeous on the eye. Look at that. I mean, this is a color story right here. You can see the quality just within the swatches. Okay, let's get into the 
cooler side here. I'm going to put the swatches a little bit closer to one another because my short arm <laughs> is running out of space. Oh, what a beautiful skin tone shimmer that is. I will admit that given that this is my mom's palette, I haven't used it too terribly much. It just hasn't been something that I've reached for. But wow, look at that. Okay, last color. And I feel like I haven't taken advantage of the time together because look at this color story. I think it is so pretty. It's muted, but it still is really interesting. It's not your traditional everyday style palette. I used to feel uninspired by this palette. I don't know what has happened to me in recent years, but now I'm looking at this and I just love the options that this has. So this is one that I am very sad to say goodbye to, uh, but you know, I really don't need it right now. I just don't, but it is a gorgeous palette and it was fun to swatch, so yeah. Alright you guys, there we have it. Those are all of the Natasha Denona palettes that will no longer be in my collection. Fun walk down memory lane here. And you know what that means? Since I am losing these palettes, that means before I go, I will get my rankings up for you guys. They were on my list to film. They'll come up a little later though, but don't worry. They are coming up. Unfortunately, a Pat McGrath video like this is going to be coming as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was fun for you. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.